Jesus did not just die. But he said, I will not leave you lonely. He said, I will not leave you forsaken. He said, I will send you a comforter. He said, I will send you a helper. And when I think of his goodness, I thank you. Will you give him praise this morning? That you're not alone. The Holy Spirit is with you. Your helper, your comforter. Your friend when there is no friend. Your lover when there is nobody. When you don't get that phone call, the Holy Spirit calls you. God's chosen, God's elect, God's son, God's daughter. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Who can be against you? Who can be against us if God be for us? Thank you, Jesus. He said, I've given my angels charge over you. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. So not only do we have the father, we have the son. Not only the son, we have the Holy Spirit. Not only the Holy Spirit, we have angels all around us. And therefore we say, thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Jesus. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Although the world is fading away, your word stands sure forever. Although the enemy tries to break us, but your word makes us new. Day by day, your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Oh, Lord, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with you. All we have needed, all that we expect, the Lord has provided. We're giving praise this morning. I want to thank you. We want to thank him. This morning, giving praise. Do you feel that you're in prison? You feel locked down? Although the door is open, you can walk outside. Do you feel handy? Do you feel disappointed? Do you feel betrayed? Do you feel hurt this morning? Jesus felt every feeling that you're feeling. Are your children complaining? Have you felt rejected? Jesus felt rejected. He was despised. Oh, the chastisement of our peace was laid on him. He carried it all. Hold on to the peace of Jesus. He's faithful to the very end. The grass will wither. The flowers will fade. The word of our Lord stands sure forever. It stands sure forever. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is a person and not a thing. Although people treat him like a thing, he is breathing and living on the inside of us. And the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If Jesus is greater than he that is in the world, then you are greater than he that is in the world. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you so much. Lord, we don't want to do church. We don't want to do church. We don't want to do tradition. We don't want to follow people just for the sake of following. We want to follow Jesus. We have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Whatever you say, help us to do it. Wherever you lead us, help us to go. Jesus, help us to be obedient to the end. We ask you above all, oh, help us to make eternity. Help us to make eternity. Let us not get to the gates of heaven 
and our names are not written there. Lord, we thank you that our names right now are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life boldly. When the angels open that book, they don't need glasses to see your name. They don't need to squint their eyes to look for your name. Your name is written boldly in the Lamb's Book of Life. Today, I speak to somebody out there. You're backslidden. You're a Christian, but you have backslidden. And the Lord is telling me to tell you this morning, will you turn around? Will you come back home? The prodigal son left home, but he came back. Come home. The Lord will just receive you just as you are. He will not condemn you. He will receive you with love. I pray for you this morning, if that is you, you are already, you've given your life to Christ, but you're backslid. You are back to the ways of the world. The Lord is telling me to tell you, I love you. And I want you back home. Come back home. We say, Lord, please forgive me. Help me not to walk in unrighteousness. Help me not to walk in sin. I repent of all my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. If that repentance came from your heart, you are forgiven by our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. None of us are perfect. We're not here to put you down. We're here to lift you up. Be lifted up. Be encouraged. Be strong in the Lord. Focus on your walk in Christ so that on that last day, when they open the Lamb's Book of Life, your name will be written there boldly. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Good morning, everybody. God bless you this morning. Thank you, Lord. We praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I want to encourage you this morning. I'm not coming with some special word, but I just want to give you a word of encouragement. As we look at Paul and Silas in prison, it's a message that many have preached. We look at Paul and Silas in prison. And so let's go to Acts chapter 16. I'm going to encourage this, you this morning to praise God in the midst of your trouble. In the middle of your trouble, praise God. Thank you, Lord. That is what Apostle Paul is encouraging us by his example that he laid for us. In Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 40. And so it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. She earned a lot of money for her owners. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. I'm going to stop there. At that very moment, the spirit left that slave girl. Her owners were using her as a fortune teller. People paid money. And she would tell them what was going to happen in their lives. There are spirits out there. Today, claiming to be Christians who people pay money. And they would tell them what they think is going to happen. People were deceived in that time. 
Paul and Silas wanted to help people like you and I. We want to help people. We go out evangelizing. We share the love of Jesus with people. And this is what Paul and Silas wanted to do to help them to be saved from their sins. Don't forget that the devil was an angel of light. And so he can preach a little bit. Yeah. He knows some scriptures out there. Before you and I got to know those scriptures, he, he, he knows it. He quoted some of it to Jesus. He started out in the beginning as a proper angel. But he became proud. He wanted to be like God. He sinned against God. And so many angels followed him. Those demons now, they're in the world right now. Because God threw them out of heaven. They lost their place. They lost their names. They lost their position. And they became demons. But they know the truth that God is from everlasting to everlasting. They know that God is the all-knowing God. They know that God is the God of consuming fire. They know that he's a powerful God. But they chose not to follow him. They wanted to go their own way. And so this slave girl, she followed these men around. False prophecies. And so she spoke to Paul and Silas. She recognized them. And Paul was annoyed. And so he commanded that spirit to come out of her. I like the fact that he took authority. How often do we see what is bad? And we're passive about it. Paul chose not to be passive. He took authority, the authority that Christ gave him. Because this woman kept interrupting him. She was disturbing the flow of God's anointing whilst he was doing what God called him to do. And so when he cast out that demon out of her, the owners got angry. Because that's the end of their profiteering. That's the end of their salary and their wages. They realized that they could no longer use her to make money. And so they grabbed Paul and Silas. I'm going somewhere. Please bear with me. And they dragged them to the judges. And they accused Paul and Silas for causing trouble in the city. So you can imagine you're innocent. You're looking out for the good of others. And people accuse you wrongly and actually take you even further to report you to the authorities. They were teaching the truth like you and I would do. They were helping people like you and I would do. But then they lied against them that they were telling people to break the law, which they didn't. And so the judges believed the slave owners. And so they beat Paul and Silas, they whipped them. They beat them and they threw them into jail. The Bible says in verse 23 of Acts 16, and when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet with stocks. They put them and put their feet in chains. That's what the enemy wants to do. When you're doing the will of God, he would want to put your feet in chains. He would want to afflict you. He would want to distract you. Those are all his plans and machinations to distract you, to get you upset so that you can take your eyes away from the focus, from the goal, from the purposes of God. But this jailer now, this jail keeper, he knew that he would get into big, huge trouble <laughs> if these prisoners escaped. 
So he kept him in the prison. When you are going through trouble and you feel locked down and locked in, I said that trouble would never end. It's like the story of Paul and Silas. You are a good person. You mean well for others. Yet, they're accusing you wrongly. You've done everything that you can do. Yet, the finger still points at you. The Bible calls Satan the accuser of the brethren. That he is a liar and the father of lies. There is no truth in him. He will accuse you of what you haven't done. Just like he did with Paul and Silas. But these great men of God, I call them great men and I salute them. They don't cave in in the midst of trouble. I encourage you today, don't break. Don't cave in. Don't give up. Be relentless. Be encouraged. Be steadfast. Stand therefore after you know what to do. Even if you find yourself in a hard place, stand therefore and keep standing. The Bible says in Acts 16, 25, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. I can preach this message 40 times a year because we need to have this attitude in the midst of trials. I don't know how long it will take for your prison doors to fly open. But one thing I know is that there's going to be an earthquake for you and your prison doors will open because God did not lock you down. God did not chain you down. God did not accuse you wrongly. God did not say you are this and you are that. He did not lie against you. It's the enemy that is fighting against your destiny. He's fighting against the call of God upon your life. This is what the enemy did to Paul and Silas. Fighting against the call. Fighting against the will of God in their lives. But God said no. God has not promised us that we will not go through. We will go from prison to the palace. We will go from prison into praise. The Bible says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. When you find yourself in the middle of trouble, keep praying. Don't stop praying. They had an attitude focused on their maker. That although I'm in prison, the word of God in my heart is not chained. These chains cannot hold the Holy Spirit down. This door cannot shut him in. I walk in freedom and liberty because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Are you looking for a job? You can't find it. Is that your prison? Is the situation in your home really turbulent? Is that your prison? Is work difficult? Is that your prison? Are you going through financial problems? Is that your prison? Listen, keep praying. And keep singing. And don't give up. The prison doors will open. Your story will change. The earth will quake because of Jesus on the inside of you. In this prison, it's a very noisy place. It's full of all sorts of people. The noise could have gotten to them and quieted them down. But they refused to be quiet. When you are finding yourself in the middle of trouble, don't be quiet. Don't be quiet now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to sing. Don't let the enemy shut you down. Your mouth is your weapon. Your tongue is your weapon. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. They are mighty through God. So the pulling down of strongholds. This stronghold is about to come down. <laughs> this stronghold is about to come down. Because the spirit of the living God on the inside of you will pull down every stronghold. In the name of Jesus. You can imagine the prison. 
those prisoners were complaining about food, about hunger, they're screaming, they want to be set free. Some people are mourning, some people are crying. You can imagine the situation that Paul and Silas found themselves in. And this is not a situation that they're used to. It's an unfamiliar ground. Some of your trials are not familiar to you. There's some trials that we've been tried with and we've overcome. So even if it comes tomorrow, you know what to do. But there are other trials that you've never been in before. And you're wondering, why am I here? God has a purpose for you. You're wondering, what is going on now? I'm telling you that there's a way out for you. In the middle of trouble, praise your God. So in the middle of the night, in the pitch of the darkness, Paul and Silas began to sing praises to God. Bring out your hymn book. Sing praises unto God. Bring out your Bible. Open your Bible and begin to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs unto God. And when they began to sing and to pray, it caught the attention of other prisoners. Everybody in that jail must have gone quiet. Who are these people who are already locked in, who have no more freedom like us, yet their attitude is different to us? You want to be walking around with people who know how to praise God. We want to be walking around with people who can pray. Because the Bible says pray without ceasing. He said, but Lord, I've been praying. But Lord, this thing don't seem to be shifting. Listen, it has shifted. It's not that it doesn't seem to be shifting. In the realm of the spirit, it has shifted. But God is looking at your attitude, at our attitude. What is Lada going to do now? What is Mary going to do now? What's Charles going to do? What's Andrew going to do? And so the prisoners recognize that these people are different. Look, live a life with a difference. Make a difference in people's lives. Even in the midst of your trouble, make a difference. Choose to make a difference. Through your praise, through your attitude, through your prayer. Why did they know that there was a difference about these people? Because they praised God in the middle of their trouble. They were praising God in the middle of the trouble. How many of us are in the middle of trouble today? Let us praise God. And let us not stop praising him. The question to ask is how could they be singing at a time like this? It doesn't make sense. Didn't they know that this is unfair? You know what you and I would do? I don't know about you, but I can speak for myself that perhaps my first attitude might be, oh no, why, why am I locked up in prison? This is unfair, God. You know, I might have an attitude towards God. God, can't you see? I mean, this is unfair. I was doing your work and look at what you've allowed to happen to me. Don't we say that sometimes? God allowed it. Don't we say that? We accuse him as well. We can be like those judges, you know? We point fingers at him as well. We could actually, you know, lock him down, although he's not locked down. With our words, we accuse him. But these people knew that they, 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 people were being unjust towards them. They know. But they chose to praise God. Your situation might seem unfair. Choose to praise God. Your prayers are already answered. Why were they able to do this? Why? What is the key ingredient? This is the question that comes to my mind. I said, there's something about these people. What is the key that unlocks what they're doing? And the Lord says, they had faith in me. They had faith in me. Faith. Faith. They had faith in me. They believed in me. They trusted in me. They knew that I would not disappoint them. Wherever they found themselves, they trusted. They had faith in me. And what does the Bible say? What is faith? The Bible says faith is being sure. Let's go to Hebrews 11.1. 1. 
This faith that they had is powerful. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, we bless you this morning. Please bear with me. Hebrews 11, chapter 1. Oh, sorry, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Paul and Silas had faith. They were hoping for freedom. They were hoping for God to show up. In the midst of your trouble, as you begin to praise God, your faith is being activated and your hope and your expectation will not be cut off. They trusted God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In their spirit, they had the evidence that God will deliver. They have seen God already working on their case. I'm telling somebody this morning, God is already on your case. Just have faith to praise him in the middle of your trouble. Have faith to trust him in the middle of your trouble. Paul and Silas knew the word of God. They trusted God. They hoped in God. For their faith is the evidence of the things that they have not seen. And what thing haven't they seen? Number one, they knew that God had not forgotten them. Some of us, we behave as if God has forgotten us. To the point where we want to ask him, Lord, have you forgotten me? There's no need to even ask that question. Because we know that 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 he who began a good work in us, oh, he will complete it. He will finish it until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And so we are sure of what we're hoping for. We're sure and certain of what we haven't seen. What do you want to see in your children? What is it that you prayed for? You will see it in the name of Jesus. What are you hoping for? To get a new job. You will get it in the name of Jesus. But don't allow your faith to waver. Don't allow your trust in God to break. Don't allow the enemy to break you with lies. You are not forgotten. God never forgets his own. They knew and they were certain that God will not allow anything that was not best for them. God will give you his best. He will not allow anything that is not best for you. He will not allow it. So whatever we are going through now is working together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. It's working together for your good. It's working together for our good. It's going to work together. Look at the trouble we are in the world today. It's going to work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. COVID or no COVID. Omicron or no Omicron. Wars and the rumors of wars. It will work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Are you called according to his purpose? It will work together for your good. A man gave a testimony of how he had a dream or a vision. The Lord took him. And in that dream, so many things were happening. Everybody was going about their normal day. Children were laughing. This was happening. Everything was happening as normal. And suddenly, he was hearing loud noises. People were crying. People were running helter-skelter. Things were going wrong suddenly. But somehow, in the midst of all of that noise, he felt secure. He felt safe. He felt like he was in the arms of somebody. Jesus, isn't he? Jesus, you're in the arms of Jesus this morning. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. No evil shall come near your dwelling. In the name of Jesus Christ. The enemy will not wear you down or wear you out. You are safe and secure in the arms of Jesus. In the midst of all of that, he said it was the rapture that was taking place. And Jesus kept him safe. 
And then he saw his wife. I prophesy today, you will see your family. You will see your children. You will see your grandchildren. You will see your brothers. You will see your sisters. You will see them in the name of Jesus. Nothing will separate them from the love of God. They will make eternity in the mighty name of Jesus. He said he saw his wife and she felt the same. Although they were not talking physically, their hearts were connected. They could hear what each other was saying from heart to heart, spirit to spirit. And she was in that secure place. Do you know that God has secured the future destiny, the future eternity of your loved ones that you've been praying for? Do you know that this future is secure? Just because you haven't seen the evidence yet, 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 in the heavens, there is evidence. Your prayers are answered. In the heavens, it is done. They are saved in Jesus' name. What you are waiting for is manifestation. Your prayers are answered. Why was Paul and Silas, why were they so confident? Because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. This, our comforter, our guide, our friend. He was in that prison with them. He is there with you now. The Holy Spirit is in the midst of your trouble right now. In the midst of that disappointment, the Holy Spirit is right there. Oh, my bank account, I don't have enough money. The Holy Spirit is right there. My children are misbehaving. The Holy Spirit is right there. He is right there. And he says, just stand still and you will see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still. Stand still. Are you being treated badly? Stand still. Don't worry. Those who have despised you, they will come back and honor you. They will come back. They had joy because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So they were able to sing in the midst of their trouble. I encourage you today, begin to sing in the midst of your trouble. Begin to pray in the midst of your trouble. Worship him. Give him praise. Tell him he's the alpha. You are the omega. You are the beginning. You are the end. Oh, yes. You are my El Shaddai. You are the many-breasted one. You are my Jehovah Nissi. Your banner over me is love. Oh, I love you, Jesus. As you begin to praise him, those troubles will just fade away. Who art thou, O mountain, before Zerubbabel? The mountains will fade and become a plain because God inhabits the praises of his people. They were not happy. They were joyful because happiness is conditional. Happiness comes when things are good, but joy must be constant. Hallelujah. When you get a birthday present now, somebody gives you a present, you're happy. But whether you get a present from anybody or not, be joyful. Be singing, be praying. Because joy comes from the inside. Joy, it comes from in the inside. Greater is he that is in us. The Holy Spirit is full of joy on the inside of us. So we must be manifesting that joy. And that's why the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Be strong in Jesus' name. Be strong. Don't give up. You are not forsaken. Hallelujah. Praise God in the good times and praise him in the bad. When we praise God, we proclaim his greatness. Our circumstances changes, but his greatness never changes. Glory be to God. No matter how many troubles, the Bible says in Psalm 138, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. God will revive us in the midst of that trouble. You will stretch out your hands against the wrath of my enemies. It's the enemy that causes all these troubles all around us. But God will stretch out his hands. And his right hand will save us. He will stretch out his hand. His right hand will save us. And then the Bible says, he will perfect that which concerns us. Do you know that God has perfected that which concerns you? The day you gave your life to Christ. 
There's nothing imperfect in you in the eyes of Jesus. There's nothing imperfect in you, honestly. That's why he said, let the weak say that I'm strong. He sees you as strong. He sees you as able. He sees you that you can do all things through Christ. Because he knows that when you let Christ in, like Paul and Silas did in prison, you can do anything. Anything will begin to happen. And so when you're in a difficult position and you're finding things, you don't feel like praising God. That is the perfect time to praise him. When is the perfect time to praise God? When you don't feel like praising God. That is the perfect time to praise God. When you don't feel like talking to anybody, everything gets on your nerves, you're tired now. We all go through those moments. This morning I woke up with a headache. My head was throbbing. And I was looking forward to praise and worship. I knew that once I got into praise and worship, that headache would have no room in my head. It disappeared. That was my prison this morning. It disappeared. In the name of Jesus, everything that is giving you a headache will go as you begin to praise the Lord, as you begin to worship him. I command every headache to go. Anything that represents a headache in your family, in your situation, in your ministry, in your job, in your marriage, in your life, in your children, I command that headache to go in Jesus' name. That is what Paul and Silas did. They cast out that demon out of that girl, disturbing them every time. The headache can disturb us. That girl was a headache to Paul and Silas. That's why he got angry and commanded that spirit out. Praise is an invitation unto God. Praise is her invitation unto God. As you begin to praise, you're saying, Lord Jesus, come down. Because the Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. It's an invitation. You are inviting God into your prison. You're saying, Lord, come and be enthroned. You are the Holy One of Israel. Although I'm in prison, in heaven I'm free. Manifest your freedom in my life. Manifest your freedom in my home. Manifest your freedom in my situation. And so when you praise him, he will come and stay. Psalm 22 verse 3. I'll read Psalm 22 verse 3. But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. That is what Psalm 22 verse 3 says. But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. God is in the praises of Israel. Who is the Israel of today? It's you and I. God is enthroned in your praise. Let's go back to Acts chapter 16 and we begin to see the wonders of God. You see, when you begin to praise the Lord, something begins to give way. That is what people don't catch. But when we begin to say, I'm tired, I've had enough, the devil will keep you right there. Don't get tired, just get praising. Don't get tired, just get praying. Don't get tired, just get confessing. Don't get tired. Stop complaining. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. Acts chapter 16, verse 26. The suddenly of God will begin to happen for you. And so suddenly there was a powerful earthquake. It shook the prison from the top to the bottom. <laughs> All at once, the prison doors flew open. Everybody's chains came loose. Everybody's chains came loose. Everyone's chains were loose. Your praise has power. Your praise is potent. Your praise is full of the glory of God. That chains will begin to break. Even all around you. Demons will begin to tremble. Do you know when you are praising? That child that is complaining and telling you this or that situation. It will just break. It will just give way. 
The victory is right there. And the keeper of the prison are waking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open. Supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. The, the jailer was shaking with fear. He was afraid. And then he fell down in the front of Paul and Silas. So Paul called with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm for we are all here. What's going on here? Praise is powerful. Praise is God. Praise is Jesus. And that's why he is in our praise. He is in your praise. And then Paul called for a light. He ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. This jailer, he called for a light. In the midst of that darkness, something began to happen. In your dark hour, as you begin to sing to Jesus, things will begin to give way. And he brought Paul and Silas out and said, Sars, what must I do to be saved? This thing was so powerful. It convicted the jailer. It convicted the, the jail keeper to give his life to Christ. Can you see? The, the attitude in the midst of the trouble was so powerful that it reflected the light of God's glory into somebody else's life to the point where they bowed down. The Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And this is what is happening to this jail keeper. So they said to him, believe, verse 31, on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. That's a double measure of blessings. Are you going to receive this today? You and your household will be saved. When my father backslid in the early 80s, this is what I stood on. That Lord, not only will my father be saved, but you said my household, my father is my household. He backslid. He is my household. I held on to it until he came back to Christ. I did not let go. Don't let go of the word of God until you see the manifestation of the glory of God. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. So not only him, but the whole of the household received evangelistic blessings. They received the word of the Lord. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now, when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. You see, not only him, his whole family were filled with joy. Can you see that the joy of the Lord that became the strength of Paul and Silas in the middle of that prison transferred? That's a transference of anointing. That's a transference of blessing. The blessing of God upon Paul and Silas's life was even transferred onto this jail keeper and his whole household, his family. They were rejoicing. They were full of joy because they had become believers in God. What happened whilst they were singing? The ground began to move. The ground will move when you begin to sing. That's why the enemy don't want us singing. He doesn't want us praising. He wants us complaining. He wants us mourning. The ground will begin to move. That's what happened. God shook the earth. The walls were tumbling. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are very powerful. You are dangerous. You are a weapon of war, a weapon of praise, a weapon for God's glory. You are an army in the kingdom of God. You are precious. You are wonderful. You are beautiful like your father. You can do all things through Christ, through Christ, through Christ, by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You are not a failure. You're not a mistake. You're a good mom, a good man, a good grandmother, a good grandfather, a good husband, a good wife. Yes, because Jesus said so. The devil will not say so about you. 
He will tell you you are still in prison when heaven has unlocked those chains. The ground is moving right now because our attitude has changed. Paul and Silas had a good attitude in the midst of trouble. They reacted well in their hard time. Hallelujah. Chains fell to the ground. The door swung open. Hallelujah. The prison can smell, you know, can be so dark and dingy and ugly. And God brought light through two men. The light of God came into the dark place. What is your dark place this morning? I encourage you to sing and pray in the middle of your trouble. And your prison doors will swing open. A light will come in your darkness. Paul and Silas, don't forget that as they sang in the dark, the prison doors opened. But Paul and Silas did, did not run out. Did you notice that? They did not escape. They stayed there because they knew they had work to do. They were witnessing before they were put in prison. When they got into prison, they still continued to witness. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The word of God is not changed. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, you will be a witness to men and women in Jesus' mighty name. Wherever you find yourself, that circumstance will witness to unbelievers. You will tell them your story. I who was blind, I can now see. I who I was lame, I can now walk. I, I was weak, but now I'm strong. The Lord himself will do the same for you. Me, lady, who was shy, I'm now bold. Hallelujah, Jesus. If it was in the past, you won't see me. There's no way in heaven and on earth that I'll be on the screen. No. I will not show my face. I will not say much. I will be behind somewhere. But Christ in us, the hope of glory. You are a shining star. Don't let your light dim now. Don't let the enemy dim your light. Because Jesus is shining on you. Hallelujah. And so, how do you react in hard times? How do we react? I'm going to leave you with those questions. How do you react when you're being treated unfairly? It's not easy. Are you complaining like everybody else? Are we complaining like everybody else? Or are we praying and praising God? I will encourage us to pray and praise God. We must stop complaining and start praising God. I think it's about the second or third time I'm saying this same thing. We must stop complaining and start praising God. Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 to 16 says that we should do everything without finding fault or complaining or arguing. Then we will be pure and without blame. You will be children of God without fault in a sinful and evil world. Among the people of the world, you shine like stars in the heavens. You shine. Hallelujah. You shine like stars in the heavens. You shine as you hold out to them the word of life. You see, Paul and Silas were shining in the midst of the darkness. You were shine and shine in the midst of darkness in Jesus' mighty name. Anyone can complain. Everybody complains. The world around us is depressed. Everybody is complaining. So I watch myself as well because it can be contagious. I watch out for myself to not be a moaner and a complainer. Only those who are filled with the Spirit can give God thanks and praise when times are difficult. Only those that are filled with the Spirit of the living God can give thanks and praise when things are difficult. And that's what we choose to do. What are you choosing to do this month? When you praise God, others will be drawn to you. They will be drawn to you. Your children will be drawn. Let them just keep hearing you praising. Thank you, Lord. Don't forget, your praise invites God. And you know when God comes into the scene, when God comes on the scene, the earth is waking, the chains are breaking, the doors are opening. There's nothing. He breaks the bars of hell. The gates of brass, they will just break. 
it cuts asunder the bars of iron. Everything will give way when God is in the middle. Is the devil telling you that man of yours, nothing will happen? It's going to happen. Listen, that child, they will do well in life. Yes, they will be born again. The devil is a liar. Your future is blessed. Your current walk in Christ right now is blessed. Whatever you're going to do this week, you are blessed. Because you are a shining star. People go on TV to audition. You didn't need to audition for your stardom. <laughs> Christ just shone down on you. Glory be to God and you became a star. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Father, you have a sense of humor. Honestly, you mean I didn't have to audition? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, among the people of the world, you shine like stars in the heavens. You shine like stars in the heavens. You shine like stars in the heavens. Keep shining. That's my encouragement to you today. Keep shining. Keep shining. Don't let anything dim your light. Let the joy of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Let it rise up and continue to praise the Lord. Sing in your most darkest place. Sing in your darkest place. Sing in your darkest place. Sing. And keep singing. And other people in a dark place will hear you singing. And they will come to hear the truth of the living word of God through you. They will come to know Jesus through your praise. The prison doors will fly open and all their chains will come loose. Praise the Lord. The prison doors will open and all their chains will come loose. Not just those, because you see with you, you are already free, but they are still chained. Through you, they will be set free. Hallelujah. I can see families changing right now. I'm telling you right now, right now, because our faith is rising. Our faith is working. We are expecting a change and you will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, let that praise get your focus off of yourself and onto God. You see what praise does? It refocuses us. It moves us away from our present focus into our eternal focus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so I leave you with Psalm 35, verse 28. And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. All of you that are listening to me online, may the Lord bless you and bless your families and bless your homes in Jesus' name. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, I would encourage you to please come and taste and see that the Lord is good. He is good. He's good all the time. Will you pray after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today and I ask you to come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. I want to taste your goodness. I want to taste your mercy. I want to walk with you from today. Please forgive me of my sins. I repent of all my sins. And I ask you to please forgive me, Jesus. I ask your Holy Spirit to come into my heart. Jesus, come and reign in my heart. I give my heart to you. I give my life to you. I give my all to you. Thank you for accepting me in the beloved of God. From today, you are my king and you are my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And welcome to the household of God. If you'd like to contact us, our email address is churchofnewdestiny at gmail.com. 
churchofnewdestiny at gmail.com. And God bless you for contacting me. Somebody contacted me last week. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. The Lord will keep you and continue to cause his face to shine on you and give you peace. We're sisters, we're brothers in Christ. You're not alone now. We're praying for you. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.